just breaking Artemis. Uh, and thank you for coming in. Artemis, that, uh, it has been scrubbed. Uh, the, the launch was set for right about now. It has been scrubbed. Uh, the, uh, the uncrewed mission uh, will be the uh, space agency's first step to return humans to the moon after 50 years. Uh, and it, it, we're going to bring in Derek Pitts now, chief astronomer and director of the Fells Planetarium at the Franklin Institute. And Derek, we, we finally figured out earlier that, uh, that Artemis was the twin of Apollo. So we got that. Now we understand that the Apollo missions, the Artemis missions, it, it all oh, makes very sense good. now. It all, it all makes <laughs> sense now. When they said that there was a crack somewhere and we're, we were going to look at it for two hours, it sounded to us then like, like maybe we ought to make this another day. Is, is that what happened? Yeah, there were a couple of issues uh, that cropped up in the last hour, two hours or so, uh, after everything had been fueled up. And as it turns out, two out of those three weren't going to be a problem. There was an intertank fairing crack that you're talking about that really wasn't a problem. There was a little bit of an insulation issue. That wasn't going to be the problem. What actually caught the mission up today is that they were having difficulties dialing in the chill-down procedure on the liquid hydrogen side for engine number three. It's critical that all four engines, this rocket uses four engines, these four engines all be at the same stage of pre-chill by flowing uh, cryogenic liquids through the uh, tubing and the mechanisms of the engine to get them down to the right temperature. And they couldn't get engine number three dialed in. And they tried all kinds of things to make it work, uh, but they just couldn't get it dialed in. And this is, the actual, this is actually the first time on this particular engine they've been able to run that chill down sequence fully. And so... Uh, here's the first test. And this is the reason why they call this flight test. It's because they need to test everything to make sure it's going to work properly. Any reason to, to send a manned expedition back to, to the moon, in your view, Derek? I mean, we don't, even yeah, want to we don't even want to drive our cars anymore. We're trying to, you know, we want man out of everything, <laughs> but we can do everything without uh, a, a manned flight, can't we? Or, or we're going to go back to that eventually for the moon? You know, space exploration has done wonders using remote explorers, robots on surface, on planet surfaces, on the moon, and on Mars in particular. We've seen tremendous work done on Mars without humans being there. But if you want to send humans to Mars at some point in the future, then we need to do some serious in situ training. And that in situ training is going to happen on the moon because we can't actually send people out to Mars to train them. We have to do it someplace that's close. It's going to take a long time to get to Mars. Uh, based on current technologies. So since it's only a three-day trip out to the moon, um, yeah, it's an easy place for us to do that kind of testing. Do we have to do that? We don't have to do that. We can use robotic methods to do the exploration we want, but there are certain kinds of observations and integration of data that humans do best. And if we can have humans there, that can happen. It's a big risk. Yes, that's true. But there's also the part of us that... Um, makes us explorers, and we will want to do this, and we will do everything we can to mitigate the risks so that humans can make that, that big trip. Are, are there advantages to having a, a stopping point on the moon versus the International Space Station? We do a lot of experiments in zero gravity, I mean, I, I, and um, I, I figure that's one of the, the big advantages to the space station, but would we like an interim stop uh, on, on something on the moon where we could send people and they come home, we send other people? Is that in the, in the cards, Derek? Yeah, yeah, that's, a, that's the way we're going to use the systems, is that we're, we're going to build up our capability on the moon and then uh, not only use it as a testing place, but it can be a way station along the way to get everything pulled together for that longer trip out to out to Mars. And since, you know, the moon is 240,000 miles average further away from Earth, that gives us a little bit of jump, and it takes us a further away from the Earth's gravitational pull. And that's an advantage also, because that means we can devote more to payload and less to fuel when we're trying to get away from the Earth's gravitational field. And, of course, if you're going out to Mars, you want to take uh, as much material as you can to assure us a successful mission. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.